for those of you that don't know, Ian got started in network marketing. How many years ago now, Ian? 16 years ago. 16 years ago with one company, right? One company, one, one company, company. The whole time. And then you retired, right? You sold your, your business. I did, I, I actually sold that business in June. So when people say, oh, it's not a real business, those things don't work. You know, those things don't really provide the same advantages as a true asset or true business ownership. Uh, I beg to differ. It is a willable, sellable asset. In 16 years, one company That's sold right. your position, retired, and now you have all these other income streams. You're doing very, very well for yourself. So I think sometimes we forget that we're actually building something that yeah. has that potential. I got started in network marketing 16 years ago, quite by accident, really by design, but at the time it looked like an accident. So I was actually working for a church and I was a music pastor. So if you turn around here, you see all my guitars and stuff on the wall and all of that. Oh, nice. Right? Okay. And uh, I was a music pastor. So I was basically a professional musician. And if any of you know music people, right? If we can play enough money, uh, pl uh, make enough money to survive playing music, we're like the happiest people on earth. Right now it's me. I love what I did. It wasn't a job. I felt like it was a calling. It was, I hung out with people all day and played music. It was amazing, except I was poor, right? So working for church, you don't make very much money. I was making 30 grand a year. I was newly married. My wife was making 35 grand a year. We lived in Oakland County, Michigan, which was the third wealthiest county at the time in the entire country. There's a lot of old auto money there. And so that didn't really go very far. I really needed to be making like 40 grand, uh, but they were in the middle of a building project. So I decided to come out at 30. And so in addition to working for the church, 50 to 60 hours a week, I was teaching music lessons and I was singing at people's weddings and singing at their funerals and whatever anybody would pay me to do. So I was like working three jobs and newly married, it was going along fine. I got pulled into my boss's office one day. His name was Steven. And I don't know if any of you have ever been called into a meeting where it's not going to go well, but you can feel it in the air. You can just sense the atmosphere. And he sat me down. He said, Ian, I don't even really know how to tell you this, but we're in a bad position right now as a church. And uh, we're having a hard time meeting the, the bond payments on the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, effective immediately, we're cutting everybody's pay by 10%. I'm really sorry. I'm going to try to give you some more time off to help make up for it. I'm like, I don't need time. I need money. I'm working three jobs, right? And so I was making 30 grand a year. My pay cut was 10%. That was three grand, 20, uh, $250 a month, right? And so my antenna went up for how do I make $250 a month? And what I was actually going to do is I was going to be a, a, a night manager at Rite Aid. I don't know if you have those where you are, but it's like a convenience store for $14.55 an hour, I was gonna work three midnights a week. And that was my plan after taxes to make up that money. And about a month later, my boss came to me again. He said, Ian, are you still looking to make extra money? And I said, well, with all due respect, since you are my boss, you see what you pay me here, right? That is the dumbest question you have ever asked me. Of course, I'm looking to make extra money. And he says, well, there's this guy that goes to the church that does this thing. That's what he called me. He said, he does this thing and you could do it part-time and you'd probably be good at it. You should go talk to him. And so I got his phone number. I called him. His name was Assad. I said, Assad, I don't know you, but you definitely know me. I'm the guy on stage singing every Sunday. My boss said, you might have an opportunity for me. When can we chat? He said, how about in an hour? He invites me over to his house. Keep in mind, I grew up in a 900 square foot house, John. My parents still live there. Okay, I'm actually going there tomorrow. I'm flying wow. up to Michigan to do a TED Talk, believe it or not. My goodness, right? Okay, and I'm going to stay with them in my room that I grew up in, in a 900-square-foot house, right? So I didn't know any wealthy people. Nobody in my family was wealthy. So I pulled up to this guy's house, and he's got this castle-looking home on a lake, right? And I'm like, this guy knew something about making money that I didn't, right? And I was smart enough to, to, to understand that, and seek to learn from it instead of hate on it, which is what we're taught to do today. If somebody's doing better than you, hate on them, discredit them, try to be a problem for them when you should be learning from them, right? right? And so I took the learn mode. And so that's what I, I started network marketing, John, to make $250 a month. The whole thing just got wildly out of hand over the last 16 years. <laughs> it, it went crazy. Um, you know, so I had no desire to ever do that business full time. I started, I made like a grand a month my first four months, and I was rich. I yeah. needed to make 250, right? I'm like 750 to the positive. I'm out there, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing two for 20 anymore at Applebee's. We order them from the standalone menu. I mean, it was crazy. Four months in, um, 
I had another instance with the church where there was some money owed to me that didn't come through. And I had a come to Jesus moment, no pun intended, mm -hmm. in that church building that if the church wasn't going to take care of me, I better take care of me. Because what hope do I have out there at some normal job? And these right. people are not trying to hurt me. They're trying to do the right thing, but they're in a bad place. And I'm sort of stuck in that, in that problem. And so I made a decision that I was going to try to, to run that business full time. Six months later, I was making 10 grand a month, which was four times what I was making at my job. So I quit my job because I was losing money to go to work. I'm right. like, dude, but I can't come here anymore, y'all. I'm losing money to come here. And so I actually stayed on uh, leading the worship at that church for two years for free. I, but I didn't do any of the staff meetings. I didn't do any of the planning, none of the rehearsals. I just did the performance. And I built that business, right? So fast forward a decade later, we're making a, in excess of a million dollars a year, completely passively, build a huge team, and totally living the dream. You know what I mean? Like doing exactly what, it, what they said it would do. You know, one of my mentors, he said, Ian, if in three years you're not wearing sweatpants every day, something has gone terribly wrong, right? And, and that was my life. Like I was free. We traveled the world. We'd spend winter times in Florida, uh, summer times in Michigan, went to the greatest places. I mean, it was really spectacular. And after I sort of got to this place where the business had matured, I had leaders who had leaders who had leaders. You know, I still led but you know, you're not out there showing the plan. I know, John, I know you're a killer personally, and you're probably the number one recruiter in your team, right? I did that for a period of time, and then I, I began to live the dream. But that creative energy on the inside of me just needed to go somewhere. So I wrote a book, and I started doing some training and some coaching, and then I did some master classes, and then I did you know, this, that, and the other thing, and then some buddies came and said, hey, let's do this, let's do that, and not all the time in the world, 125,000 bucks a month of mailbox money coming in whether i got up or not and so we started building some other businesses in real estate and intellectual property coaching e-commerce all sorts of stuff right and then one of those businesses took off and just went way bigger than we ever imagined that it would go and through that whole process uh, it, it ended up becoming um, a necessity on on our company side on, on the, the network marketing company side to have me uh, unfortunately, disassociate from that. And so in June, uh, we did make a sale. Unfortunately, I'm bound by the contract to not disclose exact amounts, but it was an eight figure plus, uh, multiple eight figure plus deal over time. Um, some up front and, and some forever. Um, and it was a game changer, right? And so I look back at all these people and like, what are you doing? Are you doing that thing? And it's like, wow, right? I mean, that's a, an incredible amount of money. And I paid a hundred dollars to join the deal. You know what I mean? So you do the ROI on that and it's like millions of times return or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, you know, but it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do selling that business because, um, you know, the people who started with me in that business, when I found them, they were like me. They were struggling. They were lost. They were poor. They were at their wits end. Some of them have marriage issues because of money and all sorts of things. And now some of those people are multimillionaires and they've just done such an incredible thing for their families and their teams and their communities. And so to, to, to walk away from that was definitely a challenge, but I'm still great friends with a lot of them. In fact, when I get up to Michigan and do a lunch with some of our, our uh, former leaders and hang out with them a little bit, little reunion, it's going to be amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you know, obviously you've had an incredible success story. You've been able to impact a lot of people. You know, you're out there, you know, coaching multiple businesses, multiple income streams, but it, it starts with the mindset, right? It starts with how you show up every day and what you believe. And really it, it, it takes you getting better, not being bitter, but getting better. So what does that look like? What is, what are those, 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 you know, common denominators of a successful person when it comes to mindset, when it comes to money and how to attract money versus repel money like yeah yeah, yeah i want yeah. to talk about that with you because i know you're really great when it comes yeah to that. for sure so so i would tell you is that, i mean you know building a business and having money are not the same thing mm. there are a lot of people who have big businesses and no money a lot of people who have very small businesses and a lot of money okay so those two things are not one and the same okay and so when it comes to money i think you need to master three skills number one is acquiring it and yeah. so that's what happens in your business. You learn how to make it, right? Okay. You've got to have the wealth cycle begins with expendable income. You mm -hmm. cannot invest that which you don't possess, 
right? So you've got to master making more money, right? Okay, so earning money is a skill. It is completely learnable. It is a byproduct of the value you create in the community. And we can talk more about that uh, as we talk about some of the guilt-free money-making activities, right? You feel really good about, okay, but you need to master acquiring money, okay? Then you need to master retaining money, okay? So just because you make it doesn't mean you keep any of it. And we all know people like that. They're making $2 million a year, but they live like they make $3 million a year. And so even though they've got a lot of money by most people's standards, they're still broke. They're just broke on a bigger level. So making it does not necessarily translate to it, right? And if you, if you read The Millionaire Next Door, like the average millionaire next door drives like an old car and never made more than 70K in, in a year, and but they have this pile of money. They were good at number two, they just never got number one down, right? So they got there at the end of their life. They squeaked into to millionaire status, which, by the way, is nothing. If yep. all you have is a million dollars, you are broke. Yeah. Okay? Because if you take that million dollars, you want to live off that for 20 years, that's 50K a year. Okay? And that does not get you very much today. That gets you two for 20 on Applebee's once a month, right? Okay, that's <laughs> it. So you've got a number one master acquiring it. Number two, you've got a master retaining it. Number three is then you have to master multiplying it. Those are the three things. So, so I can make it, I can keep it, and now I can multiply it. If you can learn those three skills, you will make more money and, and create more wealth than you have any idea what to do with. It really is pretty basic, but you've got to learn those three things. And most people aren't learning any of those things, yep. right? They're going there they're on a job and they're trying to figure out how do I get $2 more an hour? Okay, well, that's not, that's not going to change your life, right? Like you've got to be thinking, how do I make, John, when I sold that network marketing business, just in that one income, okay, I was making 57, 58 times what I was earning before. 58 hmm. times more, right? Okay. It would have taken me 58 years to make what I would make in one year. That was just that one stream of income, which by the way, was the smaller of the streams of income at that point, right? Okay. So we've got to, we've got to make it, we've got to retain it, and then we've got to multiply it. And so, so how do you do that, right? So you, you learn from people that have done all three of them and they may not be the same people, right? Mm -hmm. One person might be a killer at making money. Go learn from them how to do it. Another person might be a killer at budgeting systems, how to save, where to save, how to set yourself up for taxes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then one of them is, is great at, here's how I pick opportunities and understand where I'm gonna put my money to get the greatest return on it. You know, if you make more money, but you're not buying assets, you're buying liabilities, you know, it's like you said, you're just gonna be broker on a higher level. And we all know those people that are trying to keep up with the Joneses, right? They got the nicest cars, they got the designer, you know, clothes, they got the nice watch, they got all the things. But the reason they're struggling is because they're, the more they make, the more they spend, right? They're not buying assets. They're not, you know, like you said, investing their money wisely, finding ways to grow it, protect it, all the things. And I think that's so important because some of us actually have this like weird relationship with money where it's like, we get it and we feel like we, we, and it's, it's not even like a conscious thing. It's like subconscious. It's like you end up like, like purposely getting rid of it. You like sabotage your growth. You sabotage your check, your, your income, you sabotage your business. And it's, it's a real issue for a lot of people because, you know, you, you kind of like, you know, grew up with, you know, the, I remember my dad used to say like money doesn't grow on trees. Right. Which actually is funny because it kind of does actually come from trees, right? It's paper, but you know, right. It's another day, another dollar, like this, this, this mentality. Sure of exchanging time for dollars and anyone that's rich is probably ripping people off. Anybody that's successful is probably scamming people or, you know, the rich people in all the movies and all the shows is like, they're like the, 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 the bad guy, the villain. Right. So it's this, it's this mindset that's, that's, you know, really wrecked a lot of people. And I think also yeah. I a video about this the other day, we're taught growing up to also go to school, get educated, you know what I'm saying? Get a degree, Get that piece of paper that says, I'm smart, please hire me. And who do you go and get a job with? Who do you go and work for? The entrepreneur, the business owner. And a lot of times they don't have the college education, right? Yeah. They hire the smart people to work for their company. So, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong, by the way, with going to school, getting a degree, if you're going for something specific. But that is not the path to wealth. No, not it at could all. Be, it could be a stepping stone for some people, right? It could be a part of their journey. But you don't go to school to get rich. 
Let's be clear. So maybe you could talk about some of those those guilt free yeah, yeah. activities. Well, let's let's start where let's start on where do those you know ideas come from? Money doesn't grow right. on trees. If you're rich, you probably stepped on the back of the little people to get there. And understand that we all tell ourselves a story. And so when we lack resources, we've got to have a reason in our mind that justifies our lack of resource. And so it's easy to to not have to chin up to learning about money increasing our performance, being accountable to society in our level of service, if we can vilify it. Yeah. Well, who would want that anyways? It's bad to have all that. So it's okay. If I'm broke, it's okay because broke means you're good and rich means you're bad. And so I don't want to be bad. Why would I want to go down that path, right? So it's, it's this rationalization to help us feel good about ourselves, being deficient in a major area of our life. That's where it comes from, number one. Yeah. But let's talk about that, right? Because do you know what the most expensive thing on earth is, John? Just the most expensive thing. It's not a Richard Milley watch. It's not a P1 McLaren. It's not, you know, the most expensive piece of real estate ever built in, in uh, uh, LA. It's your limiting beliefs around money. Mm. That's the most expensive thing on earth. Why? Because we're never gonna consistently outperform the level of those limiting beliefs. And I think that there's a few of them that keep people in a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of negativity around money. And, and think about it like this. Uh, imagine money as a relationship, right? So if you treated somebody in your life poorly, you always said, I don't need you. And there's more things to my life than you. You know, I just, you know, I don't need to care about you all the time. Here's, here's, I always have more problems when I'm with you. Who would want that, right? If you were in a relationship with a person that talked to you like that, you would not stay in that relationship very long, right? Well, that's how money works. It does not go where it's not wanted. It does not stay where it is not appreciated. It does not belong where it is not put to use. Yep. Okay, so, so many of us, we have these really strained relationships with money because we have this really bad thing. We have these limiting beliefs. The number one thing, and I, I don't know the spiritual background of everybody on here, and I don't presume to know, and whatever you do, you do you, okay? But here's what I do know. A lot of people ask the question, does God want me to be wealthy? Is it okay, right? Is, is this something that God wants? And I think that for me, that was a major question in my life. Like I sort of felt guilty for starting to create all this wealth. Is that something that God wants for you? And what I learned, John, was God does not mind you having money as long as money does not have you. So I see that a lot. I see a lot of people who, see, who think money changes people, right? I, I, man, I knew this person and when they got money, they changed, they, were, they became greedy or blah, blah, blah. Money doesn't change people. Mm -hmm. Money exposes people. Amen. It shows what's on the inside of you. If you're good, if you're giving, if you're honest, you're gonna do really great things with that money. If you're selfish and greedy and self-centered, you know, you're probably going to do not so great things with that money, right? But money didn't change you. Money exposed you. And so instead of being worried about what's going to happen to you when you get all that money, why don't you be worried about what's going to happen to you right now if you don't change and grow and become a person worthy of walking in the weight of carrying a lot of resources, right? So I see that all the time. I see that mindset. I see people who say, you can't take it with you. Ha ha ha. Right, we can't take it with you. So why should I kill myself trying to get all the money? You can't take it with you anyways. And you know what? You're right. You can't take it with you, but you can leave it to the people you love and care about. Amen. You can change the causes that resonate in your heart. You can improve your community. So just because you can't have it with you in that casket doesn't mean you're not responsible to go earn as much as you can, save as much as you can, give as much as you can, and empower as much as you can. What a selfish way of thinking. I'm going to deprive the charities I love, my kids, my grandkids, the community that needs my service. I'm not, I don't care about none of y'all. I just, I can't take it with me. <laughs> so I'm not going to do any of that for you. How crazy and selfish is that? But so many people think that way, right? Yeah, it's true. And it's like I always say, it's like, you know, bigger the problem, bigger the paycheck, right? And right. You know, if people say, hey, I want more money, then you're going to have to be okay with, you know, doing something outside the box. You're going to have to be okay yeah. with, you know, having those challenges, but that's how you grow. That's how you make a bigger impact, you know, and, and it is tough because I think when you're broke, you know, like a lot of us that get involved in network marketing, direct sales, we become entrepreneurs, we get involved because we need the money and you can't bring that neediness to the marketplace. That's not how it works. Like if you need yeah. money, you, you, you can't 
you know, bring that to your client base or uh, to a prospect. Like, I need you to buy this so that I can make some money. But when we first get started, I knew for me, when I first got started 20, 21 years ago, and I never heard of network marketing, direct sales, had no business being in business, no background in business. Like, I wanted to make money so I didn't have to wait tables. So I had to yeah. live at home with my parents. Right, I was 20 years old. I was broke, busted, and disgusted. Never experienced personal development or had a mentor, nothing like that. But my motivation in the beginning was to make money. But then you make a bunch of money, right? You start earning a significant income, and you realize it's not the money, it's the freedom. Yeah. It's freedom of choice. So you can choose who you work with. You can choose on where you go to vacation, where you send your kids to school, what your day's gonna look like. You can choose to sleep in, wake up when you're done sleeping, and not have to rush off to work. And, this is what's so amazing about money, but it can't be about you. Whether you're like, hey, well, hey, I'm not like what Ian's talking about. Like, I, I do want to make money. I love money. I, I want to make me money. And again, you're not going to make a big income if you're not making a big impact. And yeah. when you make it about other people, it's just so much more rewarding. And it almost sounds a little maybe cringy or uh, cliche, but it's a true story. The more people you help get what they want, the more you get what you want. And the reason Ian is so successful and the reason he has all these incomes and he has the lifestyle and he has the freedom, you guys can tell like he's a giver. He has an abundant mentality. He's thinking prosperity, blessing. Like he wants to make a big impact while he's here. And look, we all don't know how long we're going to be here. But what I will tell you is a lot of people are talking about the recession. They're talking about money, inflation, all these things. And they're worried and they're scared. You can't live in fear, first of all. Second of all, Money ain't leaving the earth, y'all. It ain't evaporating. It's still here. It's just a matter of where it's going. It's still here. The, in fact, there's more money right now in circulation than ever before, which is why when you said that earlier about having a million dollars, you're broke, right? That's not enough money in this day and age. In fact, I heard Grant Cardone say one time, million dollars, that's baby money. That's just getting started. So, of course, listen, I know some of you are like, I can't imagine seven figures. But isn't that part of the reason you don't attract it? Like, if you can't imagine it, it's hard to make it a reality. But with all that being said, it's the baby steps, right? For me, in those early days, those early years to have the breakthroughs that I had, it, it wasn't a, like, light bulb moment. And I, all of a sudden, I went from, you know, broke, busted, and disgusted to super rich, super successful, right? It was, it was just the gradual process of building up my confidence and my belief and eventually starting to attract people that were more open-minded, people that had more ambition, people that uh, thought like I thought. All of a sudden, I started attracting and surrounding myself with entrepreneurial-minded people, amazing leaders and rock stars like Ian where you start to go, wow, you know what? They are amazing. They're inspiring. They're, 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 you know, a super sharp, smart, amazing person, but they're no different than me. They've just been at it longer. And the best part is they're willing to teach me how to get it. But our whole goal is to give back and share with people the lessons and the experiences that we've had, just like Ian is doing right now. And it really is a true story that the more people you help, the more success you have, and the more not only prosperous it is, the more profitable it is, but the more it just lights your soul on fire, which is why him and I could talk all day about this stuff because we have a passion for it. So Ian, what would be some of those, those like behaviors that a, you know, a four, five, six, seven, 10, 20 figure earner does to gradually build up that level of success? Because it all starts somewhere, right? So you were talking about what I call the belief continuum. Right. So, so we're never going to outperform the level of our limiting beliefs. Right. And in the beginning, our beliefs are smaller. Right. I just want to make two hundred fifty dollars a month. And so the key is I executed on that goal. And so what happened is my belief level expanded. I said, well, OK, I can do that. I can believe for more now. So then it was a thousand a month. I did that. Then it was two thousand then five thousand then ten thousand and twenty five thousand fifty hundred. Right. This year, we, we will have our first million dollar month in income and but it didn't start that way it started much smaller but you have to follow through and execute on on belief one and what that does is it moves you further down that continuum and further down that continuum and further down that continuum and most people they're going to stop when they're satisfied yep. right they're, they're going to get full and they're going to stop moving that belief and pushing further i love what you were talking about earlier with with you know i need money money is not a byproduct of need Money is 
byproduct of valuable service to other people, right? So, so number one is stretching that belief systematically, right? Accomplishing one thing, immediately setting a bigger goal and working towards that. And if we won't do what we say we're gonna do, instead of building belief, we build distrust with us. And that's where a lot of people are that are watching. They don't trust themselves because they said they were gonna do it. They said they were gonna do it. They said they were gonna do it. And they didn't, didn't, didn't. So today you need to say, it could be a simple thing. Could be reaching out and making an introduction. Could be inviting somebody to an overview. It could be starting a conversation. Set a goal that moves you in the direction of the money goal that you have and accomplish that today. And when you do that, you can, you can begin to move further. So that's the first thing that I would say is set a goal, right? And, and move yourself down that, down that line. The second thing is you need to work on your mindset about money because of what you talk about, you could do the right things and still self-sabotage. You could create the income and lose the income. So you've gotta be working on what you are doing and then you've gotta be working on why you are doing at the same mm -hmm. time. It's like a teeter-totter, okay? So on one side of the teeter-totter is your skills, your work ethic, your, your, your mindset, and on the other side of that teeter-totter is your belief about money, its role in your life, and why you should have it. And so what happens is when we get our skill sets better and better and better, they're getting heavier, they're getting bigger, they're, and the teeter-totter goes up, but then we're just stuck up here with great skills but poor thinking about money. Or we just do self-improvement, 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 but we don't actually apply any of it. So we're weighted down, like we're moving, but now we're not executing on any of it. What we want to do, John, is we, can't, we want to oscillate back and forth and continue to raise the level of where we're playing at. You want to do both of those things. I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars I have spent and how many countless hours I have studied, but I study wealth. I study the mindset of wealthy people and how they think about money. And every time I find something that I disagree with or I think is wrong, that's where my hangup is. That's where my hangup is in that area. They think in a certain way. And so their money is a byproduct of their thinking. How I think differently is where I diverge from them on their path, right? And so I've studied that the, the, the mindset of wealth, the science of wealth, all of that, because I want to be open to receive that. I don't want to repel it, right? I want to be an attractant of money, not a repeller of money. Okay. And so we need to study both. We need to have tangible skills that bring us money through the exchange of value. And we need to have a mindset that says you're worthy of that money. Mm. You deserve to have it. You are the best steward of it. All of those things uh, uh, account for keeping it and multiplying it. And, you know, it's funny, too, because sometimes when you start to make money, you know, you almost have this like, uh, uh, you know, this this FOMO that you're going to lose it. Right. That you're going to you're going to you know mess it up and you start hoarding money. You start you start yeah. hoard the money because they're so afraid that it's going to go away. And I heard Tony Robbins one time because there was a big leader at GoPro that asked that question. And they were like, how do you, you know, get over that, like that fear of it, like all going away, all falling apart, and, you know, just like this, this constant, like almost like a scarcity mindset that just kind of creeps in there, you know, late at night. Like, what if it all goes away? What if my millions go away? What if my income goes away? What if my business falls apart? And he's like, that tells me that you're not giving enough of it away. Because when you start to come from a place of abundance, and you're giving, you're, maybe you're donating to charities, right? Maybe you're giving back to your community, giving back to your team, your family, whatever that is, it, it becomes this, this, this natural byproduct of, you know, the value like you talked about, but then it becomes this like law of reciprocity. It becomes this, you know, this situation where it's like, you just become like a money magnet and an opportunity magnet. And then also, because you're making an impact, you feel so good, which means you show up good, you do good, you perform good. It's kind of like, you know, those of us that get ready in the morning and how many of us like when you get like your hair did, you know what I'm saying? You get, you know, your nails did or, you know, ladies, you got the makeup on, like you got the eyelashes, like you feel better, so you do better. It's the same thing in our business where you start to show up with that abundant mentality and you're giving, you're donating money, right? And it's amazing too how much of an impact it can make for those of us that start donating, start giving back, like you give, you give, you know, $1,000, $500 to a charity. It's like a ton of money and it feels so good. So you're actually giving money away and it feels kind of selfish. It feels kind of amazing 
it is possible for all of you to achieve your dreams. It is possible and worth the journey for you to get better, for you to put forth the effort. You know, I always say, uh, you mentioned this, a lot of people do a whole lot of learning. Like at some point you want to remove the L, like implement the things you're learning so you can start freaking earning and getting after it. And there's all these opportunities out there. Making money is a, it's a process about bringing value to people. And I love what you said. It's not, not just the money, it's the freedom, but I would take it one step further. It's not just the freedom, it's the service. Mm -hmm. right? service that goes in. Money is a byproduct of how you serve people. If you serve people greatly and in large numbers, you end up with lots of money. If you're serving you, right, me, my three clients, me, myself, and I, you end up with not very much because nobody pays you to serve you.